Hi, I'm Emmy from Tree People, and today I'm going to show you how you can compost at home even if you live in an apartment. Composting is great because you're sustainably recycling food waste, which would otherwise typically end up in a landfill, and you're creating your own amazing free organic fertilizer. The method we're using today is vermi composting or composting with worms. Worm bins are compact and tidy, which is perfect for smaller indoor spaces. So to make and maintain a simple worm bin like this one, you need a bin. I got mine, um, the super cute purple one from Home Depot for around $10. And I do recommend a non-transparent storage container um, with two lids, one for the bottom in case liquid leaks out um, and one for the top since worms do like the dark. Since worms do need oxygen, I drilled around 12 tiny holes in the bottom of the bin and also around 20 holes all along the top. So once you have your bin set up, you need to partially fill it around a third of the way with bulk material or what we call bedding. I use a combination of shredded paper, rehydrated cocoa core, which you can find at home hardware stores or the pet store, and some potting soil. And the bedding is really important. It's your browns carbon source that is vital in any composting mixture and balance. And the goal for the bedding is to have um, the dampness similar to that of a wrung out sponge. So just add water until you feel that right uh, level of moisture. The amount of worms to start with depends on the size of your bin. My bin is 30 gallons and when I started this bin around four months ago, I had less than 100 worms. And now there's at least 500, maybe even a thousand in here. So yeah, they will reproduce and the population will grow in time. And in the right conditions, a worm population can double in 90 days. But they do keep their own population in check, so don't worry about having a worm um, infestation or too many worms. It's important to have your worm bin and bedding ready and waiting before your worms arrive so that they can get comfortable straight away. Dig a little hole in the bedding, add some food scraps, and then add the worms, and then cover it up with more bedding. I also then cover it up with a cardboard or you can use newspaper to just keep everything moist and it also helps prevent the worms from trying to crawl out. Now that you've got your bin, bedding, and worms, let's talk about how to maintain it. I collect my food scraps in this container, which I bought secondhand, and once it fills up, I add it to the bin once a week. Before adding food each week, carefully stir and fluff all the contents of the, of the worm bin to introduce oxygen, assess how much food they've eaten, and generally check the condition of the bin. In an established worm bin, it's best practice to add a handful of browns, like dried leaves, paper, dried hay, or straw, each time you feed the bin more uh, food scraps. The browns help to offset the higher nitrogen and moisture content of the greens, which are the food scraps. And this is essential in keeping a well-balanced, healthy bin that doesn't get smelly at all. A stinky worm bin is usually the result of too much food, too little browns, too much moisture, and or too little air. So if the worm bin seems really dry, give it a light shower. Once you've had your bin up and running for a few months, you can start harvesting small amounts of finished compost or worm castings. And with time, you can gradually harvest more and more as your population grows and they start turning more of the bin over. 